it's a contract. No, sorry, it's a taking the father to buy the view, accept upon himself to do all the things that he did. And the
Vite da, vite da, vite da, ho smetto che devo scendere. Vado a venire a mandare da me, vado a mandare da
כל הארץ, ביום הזה יהיה אלון היפה, שום היפה. Okay, I'm going to put it on the swing, so give me a second. Okay. Okay. Put on the swing. We're going to start the bedekin in a few minutes. Michal is just coming around the side. 
I don't know, probably two, three minutes. So let's start to Ryan, this is the last you know, one that we have you as a bachelor. Sure. And uh, it's a big plus for all of us here to be together with you. And uh, Mamish feels like we're together as Mishpocha. We've got a lot of Rabonim here. I think we say there's a, there's a concept of Roy, of majority. Everyone here is like a rabbi and everyone here is like family. And we just drink to you and to Michal that you should have a life together full of simcha, brocha, happiness and all of the most amazing things in Ruchnias and Gashmias.
Oh, oh. I don't know if you're on it. Okay. A general blessing for you guys as a couple. Rob, do you want?
Okay. Uh, that is uh, the end of the decade, and in this uh, custom, we symbolize that Ryan comes to see his color for the first time in a, in, uh, in, in a long time, and uh, for them at least. A week. A week apart. And uh, he comes along and he sees his color so beautiful, so presentable. And he says, Michal, even though I find so much beauty in you, I will cover your face because I find the most beautiful part of you is your neshama. And this, with this wedding and this unison together should not only be a unison between a couple physically in terms of beauty and joy and jubilance, but the neshamas should come together in the most powerful way. We wish them brocha and mazel. We now ask the chassan to make his way to the chuppah as we, uh, as we accompany him. I'm going to, yeah, I need the mic though, yeah. Can I use this or what am I using? Chronicle, for sure. New fashion statement. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's uh, the names under each. Uh, oh, really? It's just a price. price. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a free car, it's not a free car, but you're going to uh, check where you're yeah, sitting. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think yeah. it's yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin the kuka, as you uh, make your way to your seats, you'll find your names under under the cushions. We're about to start the kuka. And uh, we have a very special nigun.
that both the Hassan and the Kala will make their way to the Chupa. It's a nigun that is composed by Rabbi Shneer Zaman of Lidai, the first Chabad Rebbe. The song has four stanzas and is referred to as Dalad Bavois, the melody of four stanzas, correlating to the four spiritual worlds and states of spiritual consciousness, Atilus, Berea, Yitzira, and Asiya. And this nigun, Michal, with her musical background, has conceptualized and produced a personalization of the nigun herself. And as the Hassan and Kala walk down to this nigun, we visualize them and experience them entering into the highest states of spiritual consciousness together.
Baruch Haba, Palace. Palace is one of the witnesses here. We welcome the Chatan and the Kala to the Chupa. Oh, what a special Chupa it is. The Chupa has been decorated with the seven species of Israel. And even though Michal's family Safta Hava Gela, Safta Haya, and Saba Nachum Nichtman, Michal's mother, Gilit, and siblings Yuval, Yael, and Kobi. All of those names, if you count them, Michal, are seven. And these seven species represent you here with us today under the chuppah. The talus that we see here above is Ryan's dad's talus. And this talus represents, not by any planning, I don't think, but this talus represents the paternal love that the Shechina of HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes down to share in this experience with us, with the Chatan Kala. But it also represents your late dad, Michal, that is here together with you under this chuppah, here to celebrate together with you. We say to Michal's parents, Friends, I'm sure you've already noticed that it wasn't easy to crack an invite to this chuppah. <laughs> and we are a privileged bunch to be able to witness the unification between these two neshamas. And this is a testimony of the greatest love. Michal and Ryan meeting online fostering and, and nurturing a long-distance relationship for nearly six months. Is that right? Approximately. And each of them sacrificing significant existing loves. Michal coming here despite her deep love for her family, her friends, and for Eretz Israel. And Ryan, despite his deep love, of being an eligible bachelor. <laughs> I don't know who gave up more. <laughs> the chuppah represents a meshing of the neshamas. And strangely, both Ryan and Michal, who come from such different backgrounds, together beam a clear state of oneness, of similarity, understanding and connection. We are about to recite a blessing over a cup of wine, which I'm sure has more sterilizer in it than it does wine. This wine, just like its formation, initially a separate cluster of individual grapes, their boundaries are crushed. And the grapes mesh together to create an elevating and delicious entity. So too today, your individual grapes, your separateness, unite to form an elevated force. And just like wine matures with time, so too may the union between each of you start off sweet and beautiful 
and only grow even more beautiful and elevated with every day in your lives together. Palace to drink also. Mm -hmm. Should we give Palace to drink? Or? Yeah. Yeah. You guys ready? Baruch Atah Dino Yeleheinu Melech Ha'ilam Bairei Fri Ha'gafein Baruch Atah Dino Yeleheinu Melech Ha'ilam Asher kiddishano be mitzvah isa, ve tivanu al arayois, ve osa lano es arusois, ve hiti lano es anusuyois, lano al idei chupa, ve kiddushin. Baruch ata adinai, mekadei shama Yisrael, al idei chupa, ve kiddushin. We are about to continue now with the ring ceremony. And in this giving of the ring, we forge the relationship together. The first time we see the concept of a ring in the Torah is in the Mishkan, the tabernacle. As we know, the Kroshim, the beams of the Mishkan were held at the top by a ring, a tabat. And same to Ryan and Michal, this ring represents you building your Mishkan together, your sanctuary, your inner temple. But as the beams were held above by the rings, they were left unbound below, representing the individuality being preserved. And wow, do we have two individuals. Michal, a free-spirited, creative, sensitive, spiritual individual who loves the sound of thunder. True. And Ryan, a deliberate, thoughtful, regimented, but not punctual person, come together. And the amazing thing is that these ad energies and these attributes have been brought out of each of, of, of each of you and have been reflected in one another. What is so Im Im amazingly Im special about this couple is that they are deeply rooted and joined spiritually. Both of them share an unmistakable energy of regality of dignity and it is not only in their accomplishments and in their demeanor that they show this regality but the truest expression is found in the verse who is truly honored a person who honors the creations because the greatness of a person is seen in how they relate to all of Hashem's creations. 
as Palas comes through the chuppah. Michal and Ryan possess an equanimity in how they see the world. They have a love, respect, and admiration for all, no matter who or what, animal or human, social class or background, young or old. My blessing to you before we give the ring is may you carry on being the regal, spiritual, eternal, internal, and deeply connected people and couple that you are. And may you shine the light of your beauty and radiance to all who encounter you. In presenting this ring, you will be merging together unified as one entity, but retaining your beautiful individuality and idiosyncrasies. We call up Leon von Zwicklitz and Rabbi Cannon to witness the giving of the ring. And is this the right ring? Ryan, did you buy this with your own money? I did. Did you lose a credit card or cash? Credit card. Thank you. It's paid off. It's paid off. That's good. Okay, we ask you to recite the terminology here. Arei at mikudeshet li betabat zo kedat Moshe v'Yisrael. Mikudeshet, 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 mikudeshet. Mikudeshet. Where should we sing it? Mazel tov, mazel tov. Rabbi Green is mechubed with the reading of the Ksuva. So you can help me with the hard words, okay? Did you color this in yourself? Did you did you decorate this? No. Okay. Simon Toiv and Mazel Toiv. Shlishi Bashabat, Shmona S. Vesim Yoim Lachodish Av. Shat Hamesh Talafim, Shava Mayois, Shmoinim, Lavria Salem, Laminion Shana Manin Khan, the Cape Town. Yecha Chatan, Reuben Ben Gutman Shimon, Mishpachat Carol, Amarla Lahada Betulta, Michal Bat Chaim, Mishpachat Bar Or, Havili Intu Kadat Moshe of Israel, Vana Flech, Akir, Vizun, Verfanes, Tichi Kahochas, Gavrin, Yudoin, the Pachin of Ukrain, Vizanin of Farnaslin, Lenesheho in Bekushta, Vihivna Lichi. Moher Betulechi Kesef Zuze Meatayan de Hazile Medoraita Mizanaichi Vikusu Taichi Vesipukaichi Amyal Lutichi Kaira Kalara Vetsvias Mara Michal Bas 
Chaim Betulta, Ktava, Havit Lay Lintu, Vedan Nedunya, Ben Alat Lay Mibe Nashai, Ben Bekasset, Ben Bezav, Ben Betachitin, Ben Maani de Levusha, Bishimushi Dira, Bishmushi de Arsa, Kalki Bella Ruven, Ben Gutman Shimon, Chatandanan, Ben Meas Kukim Kasset, Saruf, Savi Ruven, Ben Gutman Shimon, Chatandanan, Vahesi Fla, Min Delay, Oid Meas Kukim Kasset, Saruf, Acherin Connectan, Sachakom Mea Times Kukim Kasset, Saruf, Kachama Ruven, Ben Gutman Shimon, Chatandanan, Achrayu Shtar, the Katufta da, Nadunya Dain, Tasefta da, Kablisalai, Vi Al Yarsai, Basra, Rahit Parami, Kal, Shefer Oyregnich, Sin Vakaninen, the Isli, Tachas, Kal, Shemaya, Tknaya, the Asid, and Ilamikne, Nachasin, the Isla Hainachrayas, with the Laisla Hainachrayas, Kula and Yahainachrayan, we are Ravain, the Freyman Hain Shtar, Katufta da, Nadunya Dain, with Tasefta da, Menai, the film in Glimmer, the Al Kadfai, the Chayai, the Moisim in Yoma Denan, the Elm Yachrayus, the Chaymer Stark Tuftada, and the Dunya Den, but the Seftada, Kibel of Ruven, and Gutman Shimon, Sandanan, Chaymer Kol Stark Tuboys, the Toys, Soft Toys, then Hagen Bavinas, Israel has seen Katikun, Chachmen, the Chronum Livracha, the Loika as Machta, the Loika Toys, the Stare. The Kanina, Min Reuven, Ben Gutman Shimon, the Mishpachos Kero Hatandinan, the Marat Michal, Bas Chayon, the Mishpachos Bar Or, Tultada, Kacholma, the Kasu from the Fourish La Isle, the Mana de Kashi, the Miknebe, the Hakoil, Sharir, the Kayam, Naum, Dan Michal, Ben Nachum Gershon, Mishpachos, Brett, Aid, Naum Levi Yitzchak, Ben Nachum Mendel Halevi, the Mishpachos Popak, Aid. Do you want the English? Do you want to know what you actually just signed? So just, just a little tamtsit, a little bit of a translation. On the third day of the week, the 28th day of the month of Av in the Jewish year 5780, corresponding to Tuesday, the 18th of August, 2020, the Holy Covenant of Marriage was entered into at Sacred Basi Cape Town between the bridegroom Ryan Caro and his bride, Michal Bar-Or. And the said bridegroom made the following declaration to his bride, be my wife according to the law of Moses and of Israel. I faithfully promise that I will be a true husband to you. I'll honor you and I'll cherish you. I'll work for you. I'll protect and support you and will provide all that's necessary for your sustenance as it beseems a Jewish husband to do. I also take upon myself all such further obligations for your maintenance and happiness as are prescribed by a religious statute. And the said bride has pledged her loyalty to him with affection and with sincerity, taking upon herself the fulfillment of all duties incumbent upon a Jewish wife in this covenant of marriage was duly executed witness this day according to the usage of the Jewish people of Israel and also conforms with the laws of the state. Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. Thank you, Rabbi Green. <laughs> We're going to continue now with the Sheva Brochus. Baruch Atadina Yelai Haina Melech Oilam Baidei Prihagafein Baruch Atadina Yelai Haina Melech Oilam Shaka Baralich Vaidei Baruch Atadina Yelai Haina Melech Oilam Yoitzer Hadam. Remain. 
end of the Shiva Brokers will be recited by Fonik.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Thank you, Connie. Beautiful Sheva Brochus. The Chatan will share now with us a few words. Amazing. Which mic must I use? Right? Yeah. Right. Can you guys hear me? It's a huge crowd. Kavod Rabanim, Vaurim Shali, my parents. It's finally happened. COVID-19 and all, Cape Town weather and all. This has been uh, two years in the making, or as my mother would probably suggest, 44 long, long agonizing years. So it would appear that we have another Mr. and Mrs. Caro in Cape Town. Or, or, or is it Baror Caro? We're still deciding this. These are definitely unprecedented times. And different times call for different customs. So instead of me speaking at a function later on in the evening, here I am speaking under the chuppah. What a spiritual opportunity. I know it's a bit cold here in Cape Town. Not for those of you behind the computer screen watching with your warm cup of tea, but please bear with me for a bit longer. This might be the first time and the last time that I get to speak without Michal responding. So if you will allow me, I would like to commence with addressing Michal's family in Hebrew, and I'll revert to English thereafter. תודה שהאמנתם בה ושמחתם עליה כאשר היא החליטה לעבור לאפריקה כדי ללכת אחרי איזה בחור מוזר. <laughs> והכי חשוב, תודה שאפשרתם לה להגיע אל הכאן עם פלס כמובן. כמובן. איפה היא? <laughs> לפני שאשכח אני רוצה לאחל לסבתא חווה יום הולדת שמח כמה, כמה שנים זה? 75? 86. 86. אני מברך אותך עד 120. מיכל מבורכת מאוד שיש לה שלושה סבים וסבתות בחיים. היא מדברת עליכם כל הזמן ואוהבת אתכם מאוד. סבתא חיה, את צריכה לדעת שמיכל הפכה לשפית גורמה. היא בהחלט הולכת בעקבות שורשיה ההונגרים. סבא וסבתא נחום וחיה, מיכל לימדה אותי את השירים שאתם שרים בערב שבת. הם ניגונים מיוחדים מאוד, ואנחנו מקווים שנוכל להשאיר אותם יחד בקרוב בעזרת השם. לאחיינים ואחייניות המקסימים של מיכל, מגן, מרחב, מורג, אכסף, הדר, עוז, זוהר, יהודה ונופך. אתם האחיינים והאחייניות הטובים ביותר שהיא יכלה לבקש. היא אוהבת לדבר איתכם, איתכם בוואטסאפ ומתגעגעת אליכם מאוד. לאחים והאחיות התומים, התומכים ביותר יובל, יעל וקובי, אתם הסלע שלה, החברים הכי טובים שלה והיועצים שלה. אתם יקרים לה מאוד ואני רוצה להודות לכם על זה שאתם שומרים עליה ועל הדרך בה, שגבל... על... ועל הדרך בה שקיבלתם אותי למשפחה. לגילית חמותי החדשה מה, מה אני יכול להגיד לך? <laughs> אין, 
אין לך מושג כמה מיכל רצתה שתהיי כאן היום ללוות אותה לחופה. אבל להשם היו תוכניות אחרות. מיכל כל כך מתגעגעת עלייך, מעול... מתגעגעת עלייך. מעולם לא ראיתי קשר מיוחד כל כך בין אם לבת. יש לה מזל גדול שיש לה אותך בחיים שלה. לצערנו, חיים זיכרון לטובה לא יכול להיות, להיות איתנו היום. אני בטוח במאה אחוז שהוא משגיח עלינו עכשיו מלמעלה בשמחה וגאווה מביתו, ש... מביתו הצי... הצעירה ומהאישה המדהימה אליו היא הפכה. יהי רצון שכל המצוות הנפלאות שהיא עושה הם ירוממו את נשמתו. שוב פעם תודה לכולכם. אנו מקווים לחגוג אתכם בקרוב. Back to English. Sure. What a time indeed it is to be married. We are so blessed to have been able to have such a beautiful ceremony during a global pandemic. I want to thank those of you that have come here to be part of the chuppah. You have braved the elements. You've come to support both Michal and myself, and we are very grateful that you are potentially risking your health to be here. I know it's a very small, unconventional simcha, but this is exactly what Michal always wanted. Even before Corona times, she told me on numerous occasions that she didn't want the pomp and ceremony of a wedding celebration and expressed a great desire to elope and to get married in a forest who knows where. Some of her wishes did indeed come true, so this begs the question, Michal, Were you by any chance in a laboratory in Wuhan in, let's say, November last year? Conspiracy, huh? Yeah. Time doesn't allow me to give an account of how we met. I'd be happy to tell you all individually another day. But suffice it to say, and there's no doubt in my mind that was, this was all Hashkacha Pratit, the hand of Hashem. From the beginning, up until this very moment. It's definitely been a, a long and undulating journey, and we are both cognizant of the fact that Hashem used many people to guide us and support us along the way. You know who you are, and we thank you for that. Well, I will reveal to you one participant in our first meeting, a sweet, innocent bird. Believe it or not, and reluctantly, both, against both of our wishes, As the rabbi mentioned, we met via a Jewish dating platform. Michal, I think she has Yonatan to thank for that, yeah? Michal didn't really have a profile, except for a single photograph of her, a side-angled, very blurry view, with like a, a yellow shade covering it, and she was cupping a small bird in both of her hands and smiling. Something about this unique photo intrigued me, So I made what I believe was a very witty comment about the bird, that, that's the, the real bird, not Michal. And this led to a flurry of conversations which flourished into the relationship that we have today. During last Shabbat's Torah portion, Re'eh, we learn about birds that are forbidden to eat. And I must thank Rabbi Green for forwarding me this idea which comes from Rabbi Bogomilski's book, The Debar Tabam. The parasha mentions, amongst other things, two birds which you should distance yourself from, and in so doing, this will bring you much happiness. The exact translation of the forbidden birds into English is unclear, but one of the birds is called a ra'a, and Rashi tells us that this bird has the unique quality of ro'e b'yoter. It sees exceedingly well. Its name comes from the word referring to eyesight. Now we know that the laws about forbidden birds are chokim. That is, they are laws that have no rational explanation for them. Many try and interpret these irrational laws and suggest that by consuming certain birds, in particular birds of prey, 
which have predatory character traits may in turn badly influence our own character. If so, then what's wrong with consuming a bird that sees exceedingly well? On the contrary, shouldn't we be encouraged? People nowadays are always trying to, to remedy, their visual, remedy their visual impairments and improve their eyesight. Apparently, the Gemara in Chulin tells us that this bird has such powerful vision that it could stand in Babylon, which is in a valley, and see a carcass in the land of Israel. In other words, this bird has exceptional vision, but it is deemed unclean because it uses its powerful vision only to view negativity, to find deficiencies. This is a character trait that the Torah does not want us to acquire. Don't use your vision to, def to detect faults and shortcomings. Instead, try to see only the good thing in others. The second bird is the chasidah, often translated as a stork. And as its Hebrew name suggests, this bird is helpful to its friends and shares food with them. If it is so helpful, then, then why is it a forbidden bird? According to the Gera Rebbe, the Hasida is helpful to its friends, but is indifferent to the plight of other birds. And we learn from this that being kind to one's own is not enough. When being good, we must not discriminate. Whoever needs help is deserving. So what do we learn from these two birds? Firstly, to always view everything with a good eye. And secondly, to not, not to be kind and devoted only to those that are close to you, but rather to, ge be, to be generous to those people with whom you have no connection at all. These are two examples of many wonderful character traits that Michal has in abundance and that I would like to expand upon. Michal has an acute ability to only focus on the good within a situation. She always gives people the benefit of the doubt. When I'm critical of someone or something, she will find a positive way of looking at it and try and put herself in their shoes. I cannot recall her ever saying a bad word about anyone. My first experience of her eye in tov, her good eye, came quite early in our relationship. For those of you that don't already know, as the rabbi mentioned, we are really different in so many ways. Michal worked in the music industry, is arty, spontaneous, very spiritual, whereas I'm methodical, logical, and imp impatient. Culturally, we are also poles apart. So from the word go, I was looking at the potential difficulties in the relationship, how long distance wouldn't work, etc., etc. Her perpetual response to me was, trust in Hashem, trust in God. It will work. How right she was. Michal has an overwhelming amount of chesed in her heart, goodness. In, in fact, it overflows. From the manner in which she treats beggars in the street whom she can't walk past without giving them homemade sandwiches, to the way in which she cares for, her pa for Pallas, her adorable companion of the last 13 years. By the way, don't they both look beautiful today <laughs> in white? Pal look at the on cue. Hello, Pallas. Hello. You want to speak? <laughs> um, first thing in the morning, even before Michal's coffee, and last thing at night, no matter how cold or stormy it is, I'm serious, it can be thundering, Pallas gets taken out for a long walk. The two of them are inseparable. Pallas goes everywhere with Michal, even to South Africa, I might add. Did I forget to mention that I went from being a single guy to gaining a brunette and a blonde in one shot? How lucky is that? The way in which Michal engages with her nine nieces and nephews is so inspiring. She's exceptionally patient with them and speaks to all of them almost daily, giving them her undivided attention. I mentioned earlier in Hebrew that Michal is very blessed to have three living grandparents. In fact, today is her Safta Chava's 87th birthday. She also has a 86th birthday, sorry. She also has a grandfather, Nachum, who's almost 99 and is married to her other grandmother, Chaya, who is 92, I believe. And towards the end of last year, unfortunately, Safta Chaya fractured her hip and was bedridden in hospital and subsequently went to a step-down facility for almost six weeks. During that period, Michal moved in 
to be with her grandfather. She gave up the comforts of her own home, including Wi-Fi, to sleep on her grandfather's couch for almost six weeks. She would get up at five o'clock every morning to help her grandfather, just to keep him company. She calls them every week before Shabbat and speaks to them with such a gentle, loving, and respectful tone. The relationship she has with her siblings and the connection she has with, with her mom, my new mother-in-law, Gilit, is something very special to watch. I know Michal thinks nothing of it, but the small acts of kibbutz aim, of honoring a parent that I have the privilege of witnessing on a regular basis, is awe-inspiring. I know that Michal's late father, Chaim Zichron Latova, with whom she shared a very special bond, is with us today and would be so proud of the woman that Michal has become. I know that all of my late grandparents, Isaac, Isaac, Nisha, Monty, and Lillian, would, would have adored you, Michal. No doubt about it, they are watching over us and, and, and beaming with joy. Thankfully, Michal loves my parents. A and I know for a fact that my parents are mad about Michal. Although at this stage, they would have been happy with any Jewish female between the age of 20 and 50. <laughs> we all know the old English adage, good things come to those who wait. And wait. And wait. And wait some more. Mom and Dad, thanks for welcoming Michal into the family with such wide open arms, arms. Thank you for putting up with all of my nonsense and for supporting my decisions and of course for helping with this wedding. Please God, we will try and emulate you guys as you are only a few months shy of your 50th wedding anniversary. Mazel tov. Unfortunately, my brother Gavin and his wife Andy and their kids Judge and Gabriella couldn't dodge Corona to be with us here, but I'm sure you are here, in inverted commas, drinking a l'chaim, all three, online, along with the rest of the Cohen family in Australia. Please, God, we will all celebrate in the not-too-distant future. To Sally and Megan, and to our many friends that are watching online here and around the world, we wish we could have had it differently, to be able to dance with you all. You know how it is. Man plans and God laughs. I'm nearly done. Today is the 28th day of the Hebrew month of Av. Kaf Chet Av. Kaf Chet, the Hebrew letters, spells Koach, the Hebrew word for strength. And in two days' time, it's Rosh Chodesh, the new month of Elul. It's a month of introspection a month of reflection and teshuvah. What a time to get married. Introspection, new beginnings, and strength. Michal, we know that the Hebrew word for bird is tzipor, which has a gematria, a numerical value of 376, which is also the numerical value of the word shalom. Peace. Two birds, like the two of us, adds up to 752. I know your maths is not good, but just, just trust me on this. 702 is also, 752 is also the same as the word zahav, gold. It took a golden bird to ignite our relationship. May we always be blessed with peace in our home and the ability to only see the good in each other. Sorry. And, like, and like this structure with four open walls, may we extend kindness not only to ourselves, but beyond the confines of our home. Michal, thank you for giving up your life in Israel. To take... to take a chance on me.
I can't wait to spend the rest of our lives together in flight. And you have a I love you. Okay, we're going to continue with uh, a special Imeshkachech, which has been produced by Michal. And as we. And Choni. And? And all of Choni's team, the amazing music musicians. And this Imeshkachech, uh, as we break this cup, as we feel the palpable joy and unification and fullness of this amazing couple. And we have so much joy and happiness from hearing your words, Ryan, and just seeing you two together under the chuppah. It almost melts away every single thing around in this planet and just gives us the ability to be here with you. I mean, this is a beautiful planet that we have. But uh, we understand that the Jewish people are still in a state of mourning. And even though you guys feel that sense of fullness, we as a humanity, we as a world are not full. And we break this and we ask the Chatan to break this uh, glass here to represent that we are still in a shattered state. And we pray in Meshkachech Yerushalayim that Hashem should rebuild Jerusalem as He's rebuilt your inner Jerusalem. I'm 
Thank you. 